Welcome back, everybody, to another recap episode of T3 TrueNOS Tech Talk. This is episode 35. The big announcement is the Fang Tooth is going to be released tomorrow, July 29th. The big change here is the going back to Virtualization Classic, which is what they're calling it. Virtualization Classic means Incus is no longer going to be the primary middleware, which builds virtual machines and LXC containers. If you are on Electric EO right now, that means you can do a direct upgrade from Electric EO all the way into 25.04.2 with your existing virtual machines and not have to worry about anything failing, which has been a big problem for a lot of people that have been waiting to do the Fangtooth migration. They have virtual machines that they know will not migrate cleanly. That won't be the case after tomorrow. There will be a direct migration path for everybody that's on Electric Eel that has virtual machines to go right into the last version release that they're about to do without any issues whatsoever. Incus is going to continue to exist. However, it's not gonna be what's used as a middleware going forward. Livvert is gonna be the new, which was actually the old, middleware. What they're doing is, Thinkus is still going to be there. They're also bolting back on Libvert. Both of them are going to exist at once. The reason for that is people like me have made LXCs through Incus, and if they were just to eliminate Incus, everything I have wouldn't work. To prevent breaking changes, Incus is going to exist. However, if I was to go and try and make a new LXC or a new VM, Incus will not be used. It's going to remain there for people like me who have already created virtual machines and containers using Incus. But anyone going forward at this point that's going to create new containers or virtual machines is going to be using the new middleware libvert. There's going to be a tool that IX Systems is going to build that's going to allow a smooth transition for people that have Incus containers directly into libvert. Going forward, the UI will not change, but we are going to get some refreshes. There is a hint in this episode that there may be possible pre-built containers. The next big announcement was about Goldeye. Goldeye's code freeze will be on July 30th. That means that functionality will be locked for any future feature, and that'll be pushed to Half Moon, which is going to be 26.04 in April. As of the code freeze July 30th, whatever functionality exists in Goldeye is what the functionality is going to be upon release. Point of the code freeze forward, it's just a matter of ironing out any small bugs that they see, but there will be no more functionality built into Goldeye after July 30th. So that's a pretty exciting thing because now we're going to get a really good idea about what 25.10 is going to look like in October when the release is. What they've told us so far on the podcast is that there's going to be a performance boost in ZFS for those people who are using flash storage, specifically involving two areas. One is the ARC, which is the read-write temporary storage. It used to be single thread and it's now going to multi-thread. The memory speed increases will also make more of a difference due to mem copy command. That's going to become more and more sensitive to DDR5 and DDR5 speeds as compared to DDR4. The faster memory you have, the faster mem copies you can do, and people that combine this with flash storage, this is going to make a larger and larger difference going forward. The challenge is going to be for people running spinning hard drives, which are most people running very large pools with a lot of storage. Flash storage is where all the change is going to be. If you're running a hybrid system where you have both spinning hard drives and flash storage, you guys are going to see the biggest boost. There will be an Open ZFS Developer Summit in Portland, Oregon in October. Chris Moore specifically said he will be attending this, and he doesn't go to things a whole lot. And you can see here, they talk a little bit about that and the fact that the conference is definitely very nerdy. If you're super into Open ZFS, this would be a pretty cool place to go. It's very low-level stuff, technically oriented, and it's intense for people just in general, unless you're really, really into Open ZFS. But Chris obviously very much is because he works for IX, and ZFS is a core function of of TrueNOS itself. He'll be there and he talks a lot about him attending the conference and some of the conferences he attended in the past. But in case you're interested in that, that's something that Chris is going to be at. So if you want to meet him in person, maybe go to the conference and listen to some talks and hang out with Chris. There were three user questions this week. The first one had to deal with LXCs and I've already covered all that in the beginning of this video. But the second one talked about AI assisted coding, now typically being called vibe coding. There was a talk about this last week as well and we covered a little bit of it on the live stream that we do every Friday at 1130. Basically, this person wrote in said that he tried ChatGPT Claude and Gemini. Again, this viewer said that ChatGPT didn't really work well for him, but Claude did very well, even though it was expensive. And Gemini continues to be the one to watch. The last question that was asked in the podcast had to do with metadata corruption. Basically, after an event like a power loss or some kind of failed restart, upon reboot, pools were not remounting. There was a lot of talk in the podcast about this because there's no known pattern as of yet. People with ECC RAM, people with ZFS dedupe, all are experiencing this. It doesn't seem to be a pattern yet. There's not really anything that Chris was able to see. So if you see anybody on the forums called Honey Badger. That's Chris on the left right here. So you're basically talking to him. He's the one that's been on the forums right now trying to figure out what it is that's going on with people that are having this metadata corruption that are losing access to the pools being able to remount. He's been really good about getting people at least to get their data off the existing pool even if you can't remount. There's ways that he's kind of getting around some of these metadata issues and these corruption events that we're seeing. But right now, like he says, there's no known pattern. So they're looking into it. And if you're one of these people on the forums, go ahead and just comment. And if you're having this problem, talk to the Honey Badger about it because he's collecting a whole bunch of data right now trying to figure
figure out what it is that's going on to help users who are having metadata corruption issues upon some kind of event that jams their pool up when it tries to reboot. That's all we have for this recap episode of TrueNAS Tech Talk. I recommend you guys, of course, subscribe to this. I still see they're under 3,000 subscribers. Go ahead and subscribe, like their channel, help these guys out doing what they're doing. Like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you guys so much for the people that are. Go ahead and give this a thumbs up and click the little bell to let you guys know when there's going to be new video releases. If you guys have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below. If you want a very technical conversation, please jump on the Servers at Home Discord. And as always, if you want to thank me personally, please buy me a coffee.